Hi guys, um, this is going to be the video tutorial for my free pattern for the crochet daffodil. So here you can see a finished one here. Um, this is what they look like. So I've got a nice 3D shape. Um, I do typically block them after they're done just to help the petals keep their shape. Um, so that's um, what they look like there. So the main things that you're going to need is um, yarn in two, sh uh, two shades of yellow or whatever colours you like. So um, for this I'm going to use the Hobby Rainbow Cotton. Um, this is the 8-4, so this is the, the really fine um, weight one which um, is really nice. They, they do seem to look especially good when they're made with cotton yarn, but you can use other yarns. Um, this pattern should work regardless of the size as long as the hook size matches. Um, so I've got the two colours there. Um, crochet hook, so for this yarn I'm using a two and a half millimeter crochet hook. Obviously if you use thicker yarn you use a bigger hook. Um, something to cut the yarn with as well obviously um, and stitch marker um, could be very helpful as well. So that's the main things that you need. Um, it's quite a, a quick pattern to work up. Um, there's a couple of bits that are a wee bit fiddly but um, it, they do work up quite quickly and um, they can be really really nice for all kinds of all kinds of things. So um, the first part is going to be the the main petals um, so you want your lighter colour for that. Um, so basic start off you want to make a slip knot so this is the way I tend to do my slip knots is I'm forgetting how to do it now <laughs> uh... yeah so like that and then pull that through it put that onto your hook so um start off by chaining ten two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then you want to join that with a slip stitch to make a ring. So that's, that's, I'm just gonna pull some. So that's got your ring there, and then chain one. And pull that nice and tight. So we're going to work into the middle of this ring and we're going to do 15 single crochets. If it helps, um, sometimes I find it helpful to just mark the first one that you've done so that you know where the beginning is. And also make sure to work over the tail for this because that will help you tighten the ring a little bit if you need to. So I'm just going to do, so that's one, two, three, four, up, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And fifteen. Okay. So once you've done fifteen, we're gonna slip stitch into that first stitch. So pull that nice and tight, and that's you got your first ring of stitches there. So then you're gonna chain one. So the next part is we are going to do two single crochets into each of those stitches that we've just done. So we're 
doubling the number of stitches. So we do one single crochet and then mark that as your first one. And then we're going to go back into that same stitch and do another single crochet, just like that. So that should be there. And you will see a little bit of a gap. Bring it closer to the camera so you can see. So you will see a little bit of a gap. We want that to be there, so um, don't worry about that. That's supposed to be there. And we will be making use of that later on. Um, so then go into the next stitch. And we do two single crochets. And then I'm going to do the same in the next one. So we're just going to keep going like that all the way around. I'll probably fast forward this a little bit when um, I'm editing. But just keep working your way all the way around. Just make sure you're doing two in each one. Um, for this, the number of stitches is quite important um, because of the way the, the next row is going to work. Um, if you don't have the right number of stitches at the end, then it's going to look wonky. So make sure you're keeping track and if in doubt, um, count them which we will do in a minute once I get to the end. Pretty sure I've got them all, but I want to make sure um, we should be finishing this with 30 stitches all together. Let's do another one. The downside to the cotton yarn is it does sometimes um, split into its individual threads which can make things a bit fiddly especially when you're working with a small hook like this but that should be the last one I'm just going to count these to double check. So the best way to do that is looking at the V's along the top. Um, so 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, so I've missed one somewhere. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if you miss one, if you're missing one stitch, then an extra one in the end will still make it work. So, but just make sure that you have thirty stitches all together. So now that's done, we are going to start the next round. So this is where we make the, the nice petal shapes. Um, so essentially it's a repeating pattern where we're going to do two stitches in each stitch, but the height is going to increase and then decrease. So for the first stitch, we're going to do a single crochet to start 
and then you can mark that stitch so that you know that's the start of the round. And then we're going to do a half double into that same stitch. So that's two in that first stitch. We're doing a single crochet and then a half double crochet. So it's increasing in height. Then we move into the next stitch. So in this one we're going to do a double crochet. Crochet, and then we're going to do a double double crochet or a treble crochet, I guess is probably the right term. Um, I'm used to UK terms rather than US terms, but we're going to do that. And then the next stitch, we're going to do the same thing again in reverse, so double double. I find that that's more fun to say anyway. Um, do that and then we're going to do a double and then the next one we'll do half double and then we do a single okay so that is one petal finished then into the next stitch we're going to do a, we'll do a slip stitch. So that just gives us a bit of, make sure we get some definition of these petal shapes. And then we do the same pattern again, so single crochet. Then a half double. And then the next stitch, we're going to do our double crochet and then our treble crochet or double double, whichever term you like to use. And then we do the reverse again. Okay, so you can see, and they do kind of curve a little bit on their own. Um, so continue doing that. Um, so you'll end up with six petals, that's why you needed 30 stitches. So each petal uses, the pattern uses five, so that gives us six. Um, and then when you're done, you're going to end up with this. So this is the shape. Um, the next thing to do is to weave in the ends. If when you started, if you remember to crochet over the tail, you can use that to tighten things a bit. Um, and then because you've crocheted over it for quite a bit, you'll be able to just cut that off. Um, you don't need to weave in too much because we all know how much everybody hates weaving in the ends when they're um, crocheting. And then you'll have your um, finish stitch at end so basically once you've reached the end of the pattern slip and you do your final slip stitch and then you just fasten it off as normal um, and then we'll weave that in just grab a needle so leave yourself a good length for this um, Just uh, weave in a few times. So I usually sort of decide where the back's going to be and then just go through a couple of stitches around the back. Except it doesn't want to go through.
sentences and then just cut that off. Okay, so that is the petal shape. So this is the more complicated bit. So you want to take the other colour that you want to use for the, the trumpet part of your um, daffodil here. Um, I'll do, you can use the same colour um, if you like, but I like to do a slightly darker colour um, just for a bit of interest. Um, so you want to hold the yarn behind the wrong side of your petals um, and you'll see just here, bring this closer to the camera so that you can see, so we've got these holes which is where we did the um, increases, the 15 increases in the second round of the petals so you want to put your hook through one of those and then use that to pull a loop a bit fiddly this is, as I said it's a wee bit fiddly to get started so you want to pull a loop up then hold the tail with a finger um, so it doesn't pull all the way through put your hook through so you're putting your hook right through the center pulling up a loop and then pulling that through so that's you now secured the yarn through so we're going to essentially do a round of single crochet through each of these gaps so put your hook through so remember we're putting it through the the gap there pulling that up and then through the middle grabbing your yarn this bit requires a bit of careful tension control as well so just take your time there is no need to rush so through one of the little holes again pull it up through the middle pull up a loop and then pull it through so we'll do that again so in the next hole pull it up and pull it through so I say it's fiddly to do but it reduces the need for any sewing as well so it's one of the reasons I like doing it this way there we go so I'll keep going with that all the way around See, it is fiddly to do, so don't worry too much. There we go. Excuse that noise in the background. The tortoise is reminding me that he's due to get his dinner soon, so. I'll finish this up and then I'll go and get everybody fed. I say I know it looks kind of tedious this um, but just remember you're going through the hole there so you can see where that's going and then you're pulling the loop up and then you're going through the hole in the middle and pulling your loop up
and sometimes you might need to just stretch the petals out a little bit to see where the hole is that you need and that depending on what your tension is like as well because everybody's tension is different so it's not um, and even you know same person on a different day their tension can vary a little bit as well I know mine does because I do have um, arthritis in my hands which means that some days they're quite stiff and sore so anything detailed can just be a wee bit more fiddly for me but that's so this will be the final one Okay, and then we're going to start the next round, so. So to continue crocheting this, we're crocheting in a tube now essentially, so what you want to do is get the working yarn. Now this is going to seem kind of insane, but it really works. The tail, you just want to kind of get that out of the way, so you just want to pull it through the middle so that you've got a length there. And then you hold your yarn however you prefer to do it and we're going to go into that very first stitch at the beginning of that first round and do a single crochet and at this point you are going to want your stitch marker and um, I'm just going to have one. I like to use these ones for kind of quicker makes just because the clippy ones that are like, like safety pins are just a wee bit fiddly for my hands. She says, there we go. So mark in the beginning of your round. So next round is just single crocheting all the way around just like normal. And because of the way we've positioned our working yarn um, you'll be able to just pull board through the centre as you need to. Um, it's not going to get trapped, don't worry. Just keep working your way around. Almost there. Couple more. one so you should end up with about 15 stitches although the exact number for this part doesn't really matter too much if you've got a couple more a couple less not the end of the world it just affects the shape of the trumpet um a little bit so the next round we're going to do some decreases in the mix um just to give it a bit more shape and so it doesn't flare out too much so I normally do two single crochets and then a decrease and then just repeat that pattern until you get to the end of the round that's one two not really going to be able to do the invisible decrease here so I normally just do a single crochet two together so that means pull in one loop insert your hook one loop insert your hook into the next one loop and then pull through all three 
just like that and then we'll just do that pattern again I say you don't have to be too exact about it for this part it will still look pretty good and if you're making a bunch of them then in real life there's a bit of natural variation when it comes to plants so if they all if they're not all identical then that's more realistic I say when you're starting to run low on yarn just pull from the ends there and pull it through and then run another decrease so we'll just do that And we're all good. Okay. Right, and then the next round is just going to be single crochet all the way around once again. So I'll just do that quickly. Um, I'll fast forward this bit. You don't need to sit and watch me do that again in real time Last couple stitches in this round. Right, and then that's us now on to the final round where we're going to add a bit more texture to the edges of the trumpet essentially. So we're going to do um, a repeating pattern of a single crochet and then a double crochet and just untangle myself a bit and then we'll do double crochet into the next stitch And then single crochet and treble crochet or double crochet, sorry. So you might find it does kind of curl in on itself, which is kind of the shape that you want, but it does make it a wee bit fiddly sometimes for getting into the next stitch. Single crochet, 
again you don't have to be too exact about this you can vary it a little bit more if you want to just to give yourself different shapes And once that's done, the final part, so just to finish it off neatly, I'm going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch. And then give yourself about six centimetres at the end off, and then you can pull working yarn out and you can fasten off. And that's that's you. So then you just want to weave in your ends. Trim that back. So weave in your ends. Um, and then that is your done. So you can block these if you want to as well. I find that helps the, the petals sit a bit nicer. Um, and then you can attach a back in. Um, attached wire, attached leaves um, that you've crocheted and things um, or it probably works very nicely being sewn onto um, clothes, onto bags, anything like that but that is how to make a no so crochet daffodil so hopefully that was helpful and everything was clear but um, as with any of my patterns whether they're free patterns or not if you have any questions, any suggestions, um, any issues with anything um, or need a bit more help, get in touch. I'm more than happy to, to help however I can. So thanks for watching um, and sticking with me through that and happy crocheting. See you later.